When working with particles, we're going to spend a lot of time in the setup layout. This gives us convenient access to the rigging tools, including the particle tools, as well as presenting us with the schematic editor. In this section, we're going to concentrate on the schematic editor itself. If you're already familiar with its operations, then feel free to skip to some other more interesting video. I won't tell. I can keep a secret. There's a lot of functionality in the schematic editor, and many operations can be achieved in multiple ways. So first things first, how do we get things into our schematic view? Well, one possibility is that you can take an item and drag it into the schematic editor. This box here is called a node, and you can remove the node from the schematic view with the right-click menu on the node itself. Clearly, you can multi-select and drag multiple items into the schematic editor. Or alternatively, once you have items selected, you can click on this Add Selected button and the items are added to the schematic view. So why do we need this schematic view? Well, the item list allows us to connect items together in a strictly hierarchical fashion. So I could, for example, parent the sphere to the torus, and then when I move the torus, the sphere will move around with it. And this is very useful. But in more complicated situations, we might want to have something a bit more sophisticated. So let's suppose that we want the sphere to go up and down when we move the torus left and right. First of all, we need to look at the channels on the sphere and the torus. Let's add a position to both of them. Alternatively, you could just manipulate the item and that uh, position channel will be added. And what we'd like to do is link the left to right position of the torus to the up and down position of the sphere. So let's show you another way of dragging things into this schematic. If we take the X position of the torus and drag it into the schematic, it automatically adds the position transformation and if we click on this triangle, you can see that the X position has been added. Let's do the same with the sphere. We're interested in manipulating the up-down position of the sphere. So let's drag the position Y into the schematic. Let's open that up and you can see we've got position Y. We can wire position X to position Y. And now this creates a link, a channel link between this X position and this Y position. If I select the torus and move, move it in the x direction, then the sphere moves in the y direction. And this is a very simple and probably not terribly useful example of rigging. We can be a bit more sophisticated, supposing we don't want the connection to be a one-to-one -one connection. We might want this torus to move very rapidly and only move the sphere fairly slowly. We can right click on this connection and insert a channel modifier. So let's add in a basic math divide. And it automatically wires things up for us. And we can select the divide and set the value that we're going to divide by, let's say five. Now, when I take the torus and move it, the sphere moves rather more leisurely. OK, so what have we learned so far? Well, we've learned that there are these nodes in the schematic, which are not the same as the items here. There's an item behind every node, but there may be several nodes representing a single item. To delete an item, we can select the node and delete. If we just want to remove the node from the schematic, we can right click and select Remove Nodes. We've also seen how to connect things together. So it's all fairly intuitive. If you want to remove a connection, just click on the link 
and drag it off. To create a connection, click somewhere near one end, drag over to where you want to connect it to, and connect. You'll notice that when you drag over, the connection will change colour. If it changes to green, then that means the connection is going to work. If it changes to red, then the connection isn't going to work. So if I drag this connection and try and put it on an output, for example, it goes red. So the convention is that outputs are on the right hand side and inputs are on the left hand side. What else have we learnt? Well, we can move things around in the schematic. We can drag them by just clicking on them and moving them around. If I hold down Alt, I can pan with the left mouse button the view in the schematic. I can do a left click drag and select multiple items and then I can move them together. Or I can do a left click drag and select multiple connections and say maybe delete them or not. Modo is quite intelligent. Once you start selecting connections, it won't then select the nodes, only other connections. And similarly, once you start selecting nodes, you can't select the connections. And this makes sense because the kinds of operations that you do on the nodes and on the connections are different. So it doesn't make much sense to select both at the same time. You can also select the nodes by doing a right click drag to select multiple items. You can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel or indeed with the zoom button in the corner of the window. Similarly, you can pan using these buttons. If you've got a particularly complicated scene, then you might want to fit the view to the window. And we can do that with the A key, just like we do in the 3D view. If you're interested in one particular item, then Shift A will center that item or that node and zoom to the appropriate zoom level. If the view has got very small, you can either zoom in again to get the desired level of detail, or you can hover over one of the nodes and it will bring up the contents of the node for you to manipulate. Notice that you can actually edit these nodes by clicking on them and typing in a value. And that's exactly the same as if we'd gone into the properties list and edited the value directly. The schematic editor obeys the same sorts of rules for selection as the 3D view. So if we select multiple items by dragging over them, we can deselect items by holding down control and dragging over them. Here I've loaded in a rather more complicated schematic graph. You'll notice that in this graph we've got several different sorts of connections. If I zoom in, you'll see that we have these purpley sorts of connections and these white sorts of connections. Well, we've already seen these white connections. These are channel connections whereby the output of this node is connected to the input of this node. And this is a direct data connection. It's a channel link. The data from the source item will directly drive the input of the destination item. What else have we got here? Well, there's some mysterious looking dotted connections here. This is a very useful feature in Modo where a vector output is ganged together into a single connection. So this node here is outputting three values, X, Y and Z, a position if you like. And the input is consuming three values, X, Y and Z. So if I want to connect one to the other, I can simply click and drag to connect all three connections in one go. When you're manipulating a lot of vectors, this is a lifesaver. But you don't have to do it that way. You can connect the individual channels on their own. And that's especially useful if you want to do something a bit funky like cross over the Y with a Z. Let's put that back the way it was. There we go. 
Control Z is your friend. So what about these here purple connections? Well, these connections are similar in some ways to the channel links, but these are relationships. In effect, these are bidirectional connections between these nodes. There is a relationship between these two nodes, but data may be shared in both directions. And we'll see these in action in our particle systems as we go on. As our models get more complicated, these diagrams or these graphs are going to get very, very big. And it would be nice if we could split them up into individual subgraphs. And indeed, there is a mechanism for doing that. If we click on this button here, we add what's called a new workspace, which I'll call new workspace because I'm imaginative in my naming. And now I can select the new workspace to create a separate graph. If I'm interested in perhaps just this part of the graph, I can move the items or the nodes into the new workspace. And now when I go to that new workspace, we just have that small segment of the graph in the new workspace. You'll notice that this diamond connector here has a yellow box around it. This means that it's connected to something, but that something isn't present in this workspace. To find out what it is connected to, we can simply double click and bring the items or the nodes corresponding to those items into the new workspace. And again, we've got some yellow circles around these, which say these things are connected to something, but it's not in this workspace. Now you'll notice that there's some dots at the bottom of these nodes here. What this means is that this node here represents an item that's present in more than one workspace. So position two is also present in the original workspace. So nodes are distinct from items because you can have several nodes corresponding to a single item. And indeed, within this workspace, you'll see that the sphere appears in two places. Again, there's the three dots to say, well, this, this here item has more than one node representing it in the schematic. And finally, well, what are these workspaces? Well, as with a lot of things in Modo, they're groups. If we look at the groups tab, you'll see that we've got two workspaces, the original default workspace and our new workspace. Sometimes in the schematic editor, we want to connect multiple channels to a single input or output. Obviously, we can do this by hand. But you can imagine if the number of connections is large, this could become rather tedious. For three, well, you know, it's not so bad. But if it was 30 or 100, life would be rather difficult. So instead, we can select multiple channels. We select the channel and then hold down Shift and select subsequent channels. And keeping Shift held down, we can drag a connection and it connects all of the channels at the same time. We can do the same thing connecting the outputs. Let's add a math. Multiple add. And this input here will take multiple inputs and add them together. So we can click on there, shift, select more channels, and then drag the connection. We can make multiple connections from an output to an input. There's one more color convention that you might notice. If you're connecting a channel to an input that's only expecting one input, then the link may well turn yellow. What this means is that the connection is going to work, but it's going to replace an existing connection. So when I connect this new connection, the previous connection is removed. 
when you're in the schematic editor you can add new channels to your nodes by right clicking and selecting the channel you're interested in from the add channel menu item so I could add the visibility channel for example to remove a channel you can right click and say remove channel from node and you can also separate channels from their nodes right click separate channel and I get a new node corresponding to the sphere with just that channel in you can drag new channels in also by going to the channel list and dragging them over and the reason why we might want to separate a channel is that it makes it easier to lay out the graph so I might be dealing with visibility functions over here and position and so on in this part of the graph we don't want all the connections to be tangled up and so on so that's a whirlwind tour of the schematic editor I hope it's been informative it's a little bit of a shopping list and not the most riveting of material but it's here if you need it